What is up, Goat Nation? That car guy, Eddie, here, and today, another video for you. Look at that, two days, two videos in a row. Doesn't get much cooler than that, right? Anyways, thank you very much for tuning into my channel. Um, you guys know what to do. Everybody begs you to like and subscribe, and then you end up subscribing to videos, and you're like, who the hell did I subscribe to like six months later? But my content's different. Why? Because I do all sorts of weird, random stuff which is actually kind of cool. So if you want to follow somebody that's random and does a lot of things and um, can give you some halfway decent information on the cheap, because that's what this video is about, doing things on the cheap, um, you have found the right video. So anyways, today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and the state of buying toys during the pandemic. And here's what I mean by buying toys during the pandemic. I don't mean buying, you know, Furbies and, you know, Tamagotchis and things like that. I mean about buying motorsports toys, um, power sports toys, and the hidden demand that it's placed on the industry because of this. So first thing I want to tell you is that most of the time, a power sport, and you have to refer to it as power sport because there's watercraft, there's there's jet skis, I, there's boats that falls under watercraft, quads, ATVs, motorcycles, dirt bikes, side by sides. Basically, anything that you would go purchase like that is seeing a significant boom, um, especially the off-road stuff. And part of the reason why you're seeing a large boom like this is because you simply can't do other things. I'll give you a great example. Um, I bought my kids a pair of quads uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I was talking to the dealer uh, out here in Sacramento who I bought the quads from, and I said, so, uh, is it, how's business been? Now, as I said that, there is literally like probably 30 people in this shop, and he says, we went from doing about 10K in a weekend to $50,000 in a weekend of revenue, and literally, they were building the quads out of the box, assembling them, rolling them on the floor, and people were buying them. That's how fast it was. So no more of this hemming and hawing, oh, is that right, or should I do this, or uh, the indecisiveness of the power sports era. If you want it, buy it, you know? Um, or if you don't, possibly, it will be gone. The color you may want will be gone. The size you may want. You may have to drive real far to get it. Um, and it's just insane. Part of the reason why this is, is that most of the power sports that are out there have either parts uh, or they have uh, the whole units that are built over in Asia. Uh, with the whole pandemic thing going on, COVID-19, you guys know that for the most part, Asia was effectively shut down. I mean, especially if it was anything Chinese or Japanese. China really got the jump on manufacturing because um, they got over the curve, quote unquote, sooner, and they reopened. Um, I think they did that for economic reasons, but <laughs> while everybody else was shut down, uh, they, were, they were reopening. But what this has done is this has put a flux on the supply chain of products like that. So your jet skis, um, I mean, your, your, your ATVs, your watercrafts, not to mention it's in the middle of summer. So every off-road park, everything like that is open. The weather's been beautiful. So people want to get out. They want to go camping. You, by the time you pair that up with the fact that we're right in between model years, which means right now, uh, it's, uh, June of 2020 next month is when all the new July 2021 stuff comes out. So right now they're ramping down production of one, ramping up production of two. What it does, it creates this perfect storm of supply and demand, which I've talked about hundreds of times on my channel um, and how you have to be careful if you are planning to purchase during supply and demand because you do not want to A, get an inferior product that you're not going to like and B, you're not going to get, you're not going to want to get something and, you know, overpay for it. Where as in, you know, shortly after like a month or two, if you were to wait, you would save your money and be able to get a 2021 model. But I'm going to talk a little bit about that too, towards the end of this video. 
Um, there's one more thing that has played into part of this, and it's the closing of other things. Uh, this ATV dealer I was talking to actually told me something really funny. They said, you know, we had a family come in, and the family said, hey, we're not going to Disneyland because Disneyland's closed, so I want to buy four ATVs. Boom. That's insane. But you know what? That's cool. Like, it's neat to see people getting out and exploring and utilizing power sports more. Um, but like I said, it just puts a, a large demand on the on the, the whole industry as a whole. Really good friend of mine recently, uh, <laughs> he, his son had a Raptor 50. And uh, his son had a Raptor 50 for a couple of years. I mean, it maybe had six hours on it. And uh, he was talking to me about upgrading. He wanted to get his son the Raptor 90. And there was a local power sports dealer. And the benefit is, I mean, where I am here in Sacramento, I know California isn't like a huge power sports area, uh, but there's a lot of money here. So dealers are here, but there's just not a lot of power sports in general. Um, but there is about three or four dealers that sold Yamaha products around us. And he was looking at a Raptor 90, and there was a specific color he wanted, the black, white, and red one, which is a sick color, by the way. And uh, uh, kind of kicked the tires, kicked the tires, kicked the tires, and then when it was time to go buy it, uh, like a week later, two weeks later, it was gone. And it was one of those things where it was like, okay, well, let's just call another dealer. And every dealer that we called was sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out. And they told us, hey, look, we're not going to get any of these things for anywhere from four to five months, six to seven months, because of the lack of the supply due to supply and demand. Um, we finally found one like 240 miles south of us at a dealer who sold it to us for MSRP, no ADM. That's right. If you don't know what ADM is, watch the video from yesterday. Um, but it was kind of sketchy because uh, I, I called on my friend's behalf. He was working... Uh, and I called on his behalf and um, I was talking to the dealer and I was like, hey, can you put a hold on it? And the dealer was like, we don't do any holds here at this dealership. It's first come, first serve. And I was like, oh, okay then. All right, well, let me get my buddy's credit card and let's let's put a hold on this or something. Uh, I ended up having to talk to the finance manager directly to get him to put the sale or the hold on because I didn't want to drive 200 plus miles to get there and the, the unit that we have be gone. Uh, as it was, we drove down there. This was on a Friday and the place was packed. I mean, everything was done. It was a cash sale and it still took us probably an hour and a half to take delivery of this thing. And it was just, I mean, it's just insane seeing the amount of people that are out there. So what are some options? Well, uh, I bought my kids quads too. Uh, but I did not buy my kids name brand quads. And let me explain. Um, I bought my kids Cool Star brand quads, which are actually made by a company called Tao Tao, um, which is a big, huge Chinese quad company. And let me talk a second about intellectual rights in China. So here in the United States, if you were to make an exact copy of something, let's say, I don't know, um, shoot. Um, uh, man, I'm just, okay, here we go. Let's say these, these glasses, right? These Ray-Bans. Uh, let's say I make an exact copy of them. I build them exactly to spec, the glasses to spec, everything to spec. I just build it in China and I try to sell them here. Intellectual property rights in the United States, uh, Lexotica, which is the company that owns Ray-Ban, could possibly sue me for using their design and making a copy. Well, in China, that just doesn't exist. Like, the Chinese government doesn't even care. You can make copies of stuff, and it's whatever. Um, it is what it is. So I ended up going and buying quads for my kids, which I need to do a huge review on because they're pretty cool. Uh, they are a little temperamental. Um, the build quality, uh, but they're kids' quads, you know? Um, they're going to grow out of them anyways. And, uh, but they're, as long as they're fast and they start every time, they should be good to go. The nice thing is, is that they're actually a copy of, uh, their Honda clones. Um, 
which is pretty cool because, of course, Honda's reliability and things like that. But even if the motor blows up in these things, a motor is $129.99. So whatever, right? Um, I will do a review on those. One last thing I wanted to talk to you guys about before I go is uh, the status of my channel and what I'm reviewing coming up. So if you guys are interested, I will be doing a review of a 2019 uh, Volkswagen Atlas, a full complete walk around review of what I feel is the best small SUV in a large market. Um, and I'll explain what that is during the video. Um, I still need to review my wife's Durango. Dodge is still selling the hell out of Durangos. They haven't changed anything since 2012 on the Durango. It's like the exact same Mercedes chassis Durango that they've had forever. I still need to review my Honda Groms. I have a pair of them. I have one of them that's a little modded, and then I have another one that is completely stock with like 100 miles on it. Um, I recently purchased a uh, Kawasaki 2020 KRX 1000. Uh, I, I need to review that, but uh, before I review that, I really wanna get some more seat time on it. Um, I have about four and a half hours on it now, and it's, it's a freaking blast. Um, I do have another Volkswagen I'm going to review. I need to review a CC. Um, I believe it's a 2017 CC with some basic mods on it. Uh, and then I do have some Honda stuff coming as well. Uh, I have access to a, to a Civic Sport and uh, it is an automatic and I just wanted to tell you guys that I do have some Civic love for you guys as well. So if you haven't already, um, definitely like subscribe uh, to my channel. Uh, that way you can tell when videos come out. If you guys got questions, comments, or anything like that, throw it down in below. I'm one of those guys where I actually respond back to my comments. So if you have questions and things like that. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.